1976. At first, everything was calm at Morris Isaac School of Seveto. But as soon as the teacher started the class in Afrikaans, the mixed language of the hated white people, all the pent-up tension of the last months was released. The students left the classroom. The atmosphere was very tense, but on the other hand, very deceptive because very few people understood what was going on, except the few people who had been working with the students on, on the ground. And very few of us knew exactly what was going on, so that on the whole, on the surface, it looked as if things were normal. And yet we knew very well that the students were at work preparing for the 16th of June. The compulsory use of the Afrikaans language, introduced by the government, was a good reason to protest against the whole educational system, and so against the apartheid. That was an education for the black people which was meant to keep him in a subservient position. He had to know that he had to be taught in such a way that he must know that he has to serve his master, and his master was, was a white man. More and more students were pouring into the streets. They had no clue yet that their peaceful procession would end up in bloodshed, even though the police were constantly arriving. In the beginning, all was calm, and the students did not take their presence threateningly. We saw police, but we didn't take notice of those police. And as we go on, we were singing, you know, chanting. To us, it was very fun. It was nice. We were so thrilled. More and more policemen arrived, and more and more were coming with trained dogs. The atmosphere became more tense. Then the first shots were fired. There was chaos and surprise. I was very, very scared because I thought they were going to help us all because we had no weapons. I was very, very angry and confused because I didn't really understand why should we be beaten by, uh, by dogs and tear, and tear gas and gunshots. It was really frustrating because we were peacefully marching. Antoinette's childhood ended in a drift of bullets on the 16th of June. She lost her younger brother Hector in the bloody street fight. When she was trying to find him, a young man was coming towards her carrying a lifeless body in his arms. And now my heart was starting to beat very fast. Now I was starting, I was trembling now. No, I couldn't resist, I was trembling. I didn't know what's happening. You could see they're carrying somebody, so I went closer. You know what helped me that I saw part of the front shoe, that no, this shoe belongs to Hector. That means this is Hector. Despite the fact that Hector was transported immediately to hospital, nobody could help him. the clinic, the doctor said no, there was nothing he could do. So he asked me all the particulars of it and then I had to give it that to him. Pictures of the student rebellion and the slaughter were published in world media on the same day. The first one was the picture of the dead Hector Peterson. That picture was considered as the most powerful picture and the, it was used in the front page of the world by then before the world was banned. Um, that picture, that, that event happened about 10.15 in the morning. Then about 3 p.m. the whole world was flashing the picture on the TV. 16th of June, there was thick smoke above Soveto. The disappointed students were burning barriers, buses and whole schools down. In a couple of seconds, the peacefully planned protest became a bloody rebellion due to brutal police intervention. The police shot indiscriminately among protesting students. The only weapon of the students were stones. But despite impending danger, they didn't even think about backing off. Casualties were there, very painful, especially that in a number of cases, even some of the young children were butchered by the government this was very painful, but unfortunately, it does seem to me that at that stage, there was no turning back. We had just to go on. Soon, the conflict spread to neighboring territories and then onto further South African cities. They fought for eight months against the apartheid country. Even their parents joined the battle. 
To the youth of South Africa, the 16th of June, 1976, means a break with their former living conditions. Most of them left and they went underground. Others skipped the country and went to, into exile. Some went to join the armies, the APLA and the MK. And in big numbers did they do that. In fact, the biggest number of children who left the country was post 1976. In 1978, the result of the horrible rebellion was published in a report of the South African government. On the first day alone, there were 23 deaths and 220 injured. Why should that happen? Because we were not going to fight anybody. We were not on war. We only just went there to give our grievances only. So we didn't even think it would turn up like that. Hector Peterson's was the first and most well-publicized death. He was never a leader, just a poor victim. Today, his name represents the death of the student rebellion. The memorial, built in 1996, is a pilgrimage, not only for his family. No, he was an innocent victim. He was not involved in politics because he was 13 years old and he likes to joke. I don't think he can do something or to do, to be a leader, no. I don't think he can be, he can be doing that. Students stayed home, demonstrating a tacit protest. They'd lost their belief in the institution of the school. The consequences of the event can be felt even today, after 20 years. The discipline went down, the children were, were not manageable, and uh, therefore, as a result of that, there was no real teaching taking place. And all these years, Ever since 1976, there hasn't been a serious teaching. The majority of the black population of South Africa is still living under circumstances similar to that time. But they achieved political freedom, which was the original reason for their heading to the streets. Now that most of the things have you no know, turned the way we wanted, you no, know, I, I really feel healed. I no longer have crises and grievances. 1994, 18 years after the killer winter of 1976, the students won their battle. Now they are responsible to lead their country.